Hey, good morning. I wanted to, uh, first of all, turn on the computer and go live and say, let's talk about a question I'm hearing a lot about, which is, what is my niche? And it's funny, sometimes, sometimes I, uh, sometimes I actually forget about some of these details on like what people still need growing their business because as my company grows, our audience grows and they feed me information about what it is that they want to hear more of. And I'm my, my team and my coaches every Wednesday, we do something called giving Wednesdays and on giving Wednesdays, what we do is we open up our, our coaching office and we open up 30 spots and we coach people for free every Wednesday. We just started doing this because what we noticed is that we had this like, you know, this, hump day i guess like this hump day where where we had space in our calendar to be able to serve and one of the things we keep hearing is that people are like well what really is my niche you know and it's hard it's hard when you don't know what your niche is because then you really don't know should i trust what i'm offering who am i offering it to and what i've realized is that is that over the year like so there's lots of different ways to get to your niche. Some of you guys are going to figure out what your niche is right now when I speak and others are going to have to follow the thread because it's so deeply buried inside you that you don't, you, you might not even want to acknowledge your niche. Maybe you have, man, you can tell me if this is someone who's listening right now. <clears throat> Maybe you have, excuse me, my, my throat's going this way. My famous fun, fun cup, focus on the step you're in. By the way, we are bringing these cups back, not exactly like this because we only do limited edition cups, but we are about to bring these cups back and they're going to be super pretty. So for you guys who are excited, I keep getting asked constantly about these cups and I don't have any more. We only made 200 and they sold out right away. So we are going to come back with this cup because focus on the step you're in uh, takes away the pressure and the stress of growing your business on a day-to-day -day basis, which if you don't feel pressure, you don't have adrenal fatigue, you don't have body breakdown, you also don't have fights with people that you love. Okay, so back to the niche. Okay, so some of you guys um, will figure out your niche right now and others are going to deepen your niche because of what I'm about to talk to talk about. And then there's some people who have buried it so deep inside that you're going to have to follow the thread and part of your journey as a, a human being, as an entrepreneur, as even a corporate crusader, someone who's like growing in corporate, is um, an inner discovery of what it is that, that you're really meant to, to be here for on this planet. So let's start with this. One of the things you can do immediately to discover what your niche is, is realize that your history shares clues. Like there's connection points to your history. So for instance, one of the number one causes that are, uh, one of the number one um, blocks that I see people face when they're trying to figure out what their niche is, is this conversation. It's so crazy. It's like as if everything you've done in the past doesn't mean anything. And you just want to close the door on your past life, your past jobs, your past breakdowns, your past pressures. And you just want to shut them down and lock them up and never see them again. And I'm like, Sorry, I hate to tell you this, but just because you don't like pieces of your past, you've been being trained up for this moment. You know, it's like, I think about like one of our clients, Jackie, it's like, I remember her coming to me and she's like, I'm like, you really need to teach media. And I told her this for a couple years and she's like, ah, I don't want to teach media. She basically had a history of doing media for nonprofits and big companies and she was burnt out. So is anybody burnt out about something you've been doing for a long time and you like just want to be like Jackie and shut the door to, you know, that past that you that you've worked on your entire life, but you're good at it. You know, you're good at it, but you want to shut the door to it. Is anybody like that out there? If you are, just tell me, I want to see you. And what is it like? What is it that you've been doing that you just really could care less if you ever did it again? And type that into the comment section because it's good for me to see who you are and what it is that you were actually working on that you don't want to work on anymore. So, so if you're like Jackie, I'm going to, I, I, it took, it took, it took Jackie a few years to follow the coaching on this. And now she has a sustainable business that now she's working on growing. But the cool thing is, is now when she makes offers, people want to 
hire her. She was a generic business coach before. And yes, Jackie does great business. She's a smart, smart woman. But like every time she came up with titles for things and like for webinars or anything she was working on, a product, a program, I would always have name envy. And I would say that to her all the time. I'd say, as your coach, like what you just came up with is brilliant. It's got like, it's got traction and I can see the movement. And that's because of her history in the media of knowing what hooks. And what hooks creates a movement and traction, right? And so like, but like she wouldn't bring in the depth of the other things she did in media because what she would do is move into business coaching mode because let's face it, most entrepreneurs actually like business. Doesn't mean because you like business, you should be teaching business. So I share with you this because it's like her niche got developed by first like being burnt out in what she did. And then trying to create, recreate, reinvent a new version of herself and push a new movement forward that just wasn't getting traction. So if you've been working on something for a while and it's not getting traction, there's a really good indicator that it's like either like, usually it's like, like for instance, Jackie, like teaching business, teaching media is still teaching business to entrepreneurs, but it's niched out in a certain area. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, it's like, please don't allow your history of feelings around being burnt out around something to give you this idea that your life has not been building you up to this moment. In other words, it's like your life hasn't been wasted on your past careers and efforts. They actually are an indication of what you should be doing now and doing it in a way that fits your desires, your mindset, your lifestyle that you actually want. Jackie is so fired up about her movement around seeing all these women on Oprah. And she's so lit up about this that I can see her vision and her movement. And she has the gift of knowing how to position it on media so it gets amazing traction. But she ignored that gift for a long time because she was burnt out. So that's one thing that, that anybody who's in that moment needs to understand that like, so for instance, I used to teach real estate, I not teach real estate, I used to do real estate. And I built a real estate division. And I loved the art of doing the deals. But I didn't want to do real estate anymore. So you got to look for clues. Everybody needs to look for clues in your background because you're, you're, you need to bring more of your history into your present of what you've learned. Because it's like I see so often people trying to create a new product or thing and they sell their new product or their new idea to like their old customer base or they want to be new and innovative. And I'm going to tell you movements get created by rinsing, repeating and saying the same thing over and over again to the point where you almost feel like everybody knows this. Well, they don't, right? They don't know this. You need to take your history of everything you've learned and bring it to the forefront and start talking about it more in a way that people can actually hear it so that they can do something with it and not shut down the parts of you that you never want to do anymore. So I never wanted to do real estate anymore. I wanted to do coaching. What I didn't realize is that the first year in business, I only made $2,000 profit because I ignored the part that I loved about real estate, which was the business growth and the relationships. I actually met uh, investors globally, mostly in the UK and Hong Kong. And I had them mail their email lists. I had them mail my offers to their email list and people would come back and I would do strategy calls. Well, when you look at my business and how many people I have helped become financially free in just a few months has come from that model. So when I ignored that model and I was like, I don't want to do real estate anymore because I don't like real estate. Now I'm resisting something. Well, I'm going to tell you the thing that you're resisting a hundred percent. We hear this in personal development all the time, but let me show you how to use this in business. The thing that you're resisting is an indicator of the direction you should be going. It's kind of like if you have back taxes and you're ignoring them, they're going to get worse if you don't look at them and deal with them. If you've got, you know, um, if you've got if you've got an area of your life that you don't like I didn't want to do real estate anymore so I ignored real estate and left started a coaching business and made two thousand dollars profit in a year I was like something's missing here well let's look back into my history this is what I'm asking you to do look back into your history and instead of and I see this all the time I see greatly talented people continue to create new things and wonder why it's so hard to feel 
to fill your products and your services? Well, it's hard because it's new. And anything new takes a while to get off the ground. And chances are most people, I find, have too many products that they offer. And because you offer too many products, then that never gets traction. And so what is the thing, the niche, that you should be focusing on? Well, it's probably the thing that you undervalue. So I undervalued my skill. I undervalued my skill in real estate to go and connect with people I undervalued my courage and my leadership. I didn't realize that courage was leadership. Like courage is an aspect of leadership. And, and it's like, people are like, I want to be more confident. Well, I'm sorry. Confidence is not part of the equation to be successful. You're never going to be, feel confident about anything you're doing for the first time. You're never going to look at all the people had, who had to adopt marketing on social media. It's like they didn't know what to do in a live like this. Confidence is not a prerequisite. Courage is a leadership trait that you've got to be able to embody. I, I undervalued that. Like I, I focused years on developing my leadership and that was one of the smartest things I ever did in my entire life. It wasn't learning more formulas because I have three formulas that I use in my business to go after my niche and be able to serve them and really like stand like like a mission driven woman to make their lives better. So look at, so I undervalued courage. So now I teach courage. Now I teach leadership, right? Now I teach how to find influencers that will endorse you. Now I teach you how to negotiate deals to be able to have them mail their databases for you. Now I teach you how to create a, 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 a movement around an offer that you can serve them with. So here's the deal. When I grew the real estate division, all I did was give an audience what it is that they wanted, right? So if you don't know the audience that you're serving or you're trying to say that you can be, your audience could be anyone, this is like, um, like I teach, uh, we have a leadership division and there are other leadership divisions that, um, that are out there around the world that are similar. And the challenge is, is they're all similar and they'll grow to, let's say, three or four million dollars a year. And they actually think that's good. It is good. It's not bad. But they're general and there's breakdowns when you go into them because you're studying with such an array of different people that driven people like me want to go faster, want to go harder, want to change the world. And I don't want to sit on the couch and watch movies. I want to actually get out there and move. So I'm just sharing with you how a niche gets deeper. So that niche of general is fine. You could make three or 4 million working really hard and spending a lot of years. Okay. But you're going to have tons of people that fall off that are actually unhappy with your service because of the fact that it's not niched out even more. So keep taking the niche deeper. So what I did was I took the niche deeper into specifically for entrepreneurs, for pro athletes, for corporate level managers. And I rewrote the third level of this leadership program and it's extraordinary. And now we're rewriting it again next week to develop some more curriculum in it to make it even more nichier right? Of niche years, even a word. So lesson takeaway number one, your niche is connected with your history. It's not connected with your new inspiration that came about. The new thing is like, it's like a shiny object. It's like, it's like the thing that that's trying to keep you stuck. It's like, I, you know, if you believe in God, do you believe in God? If you believe in God, then hopefully you understand there's darkness and lightness. There's got to be a dog, a, a dog. <laughs> there's got to be a God and there's got to be some level of a devil or a Satan or something. There's two sides. Like you see the yin and the yang, there's two sides. And spirituality um, brings a lot of confusion sometimes to this message. But let me share something with you that the devil is in the details. And often you chase after details that are distracting. And they're distracting because there's this new inspiration. Every time somebody has a new inspiration, I get a little nervous because I'd rather them look at what in my life is useful for someone else. Because entrepreneurship has nothing to do with your feelings. Trust me, when you're successful and you have like a good amount of people that are working with you in your company and you can take off five months a year like I do, and I'm not saying I've got it figured out. There's lots I'm still figuring out, totally lots. But what I've realized is that 
if you stop being everything for everyone, if I stop being inspired about the next thing, I actually shut down some of my inspirations and look to, okay, what are the things I'm already doing, like in my Pace Private program, in my leadership program? What, how can I make that better? How can I take my, my need for feeling, like wanting to feel inspired and get more inspired around what I'm already doing to make that even better? right? And grow that even more. How do I grow the team even more? How do I grow our audience even more? But it's like, so it comes back to my history, your history of what have you learned at this point in your life that is useful, whether that's parenting, whether that's team building, whether that's um, goal setting, whether that's motivation, whether that's um, writing books. I mean, we're in a day and an age now that you don't have to go to school to be able to grow a business because people will pay you for your knowledge. Here's that. Come here, buds. Oh, it's downstairs. It's downstairs. If you want to come say hi, you can come say hi, but i got to finish two more points. Will you let me? Oh, the are on the, uh, they're in the cupboard downstairs. Do you want to say hi? Can you come with me? Come here. Come. Come here. Rara. Um, you can ask daddy. Can I finish what I'm saying? Can I finish what I'm saying? If you guys start doing hearts, he'll freak out. He loves the hearts. Um, can I finish what I'm saying real quick? Uh. Wait, will you let me finish what I'm saying? Why? Yes. Can I finish what I'm saying? Yes, real quick, okay? And then I'll get you the blow toys. Or go ask daddy. Your daddy has them. They're in the cupboard. Okay. So lesson number one, look in your history. What is meaningful for other people? Okay, what is meaningful for other people is what you create the business around, not what you're inspired about. Thanks, you guys, for the hearts. You guys are awesome, but he took off. Um, the second thing is, is that um, it's going to keep unfolding, and your niche over years will get deeper just like mine. It'll, this is just what I've noticed. It'll just keep, keep getting deeper. So try and take some of the stress off yourself because you don't have to get it perfect. You don't have to get it perfect to get it right. You don't have to get it perfect to get it right. It can actually be right by you going out there and doing your best around what it is right now, but offer something that you already have mastered. Don't go and offer something that you just learned from somebody else or that you've learned in like the last year. Actually look back through your whole history and see what has my life trained me to be the best at and then go sell, sell that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest that because what will happen if you sell something that you just learned in the last year, which is great, you want to transform the world with it, it could be a product and you can actually create some money with it. But the growth of that typically, typically will slow down unless you just want to make a little bit of money and a little bit of impact. But I'm up to a big game of trying to inspire you to make a huge impact. And a huge impact can be definitely connected with your life story. Does that make sense? Last thing that I want to share with you. Um, around your niche is that when when you've discovered your niche you want to really like you got to get really deep around what are what are some of the things that they think about and say about in their head on a daily basis so um like weird things like it's weird things like i think about um like i think about with entrepreneurs like when i started right and this is why if your life history is with your niche you're, you're going to have a lifetime of this. So you think about the very beginning and all the way through the funnel. So the funnel is your life, right? When you look back at the very beginning of inception, when you started to solve something in your life, you got to look at the pressure moments. So the indications of what to sell are think back on what are the number one biggest pressure moments that you can remember in your life around this, this topic, right? And this will, this discovers your niche. Because so if you can come up with two, one, two or three of those, or even five or six, those are the trajectory of your funnel. And so if you take the very beginning and you create a product around that, and then a product around the next pressure point, and a product around the next pressure point, and a product around the next pressure point, you're going to find that you're going to create the perfect funnel that's going to not only monetize really nicely, but you're going to feel really fulfilled when you get the hit back, when you get the kickback from the people online, offline, that are just like, oh my gosh, you're a mind reader. You're not a mind reader. You actually just lived it.
And here's the deal with building your niche. Your niche is your tribe and their people they're people that are on the same journey. They've been given some of the same struggles that you have been given. And so when you keep creating new things, you're creating things for the future and you haven't really gotten a depth of intimacy into that future yet. So what if you stop trying to compete with glitz, glamour, sparkles of like the next new thing? And this was a big lesson for me. Like, it's like, I'm still tempted to innovate something really cool so I can get up on a stage and like be that smart person. But then when you look at my history, when I was a little girl, I was, I was told so often that I was stupid that it's like that, that devils in the details is trying to tempt me to go after that as my recognition versus realizing that my purpose is connected with everything I've already lived and I don't need to create something new. You don't need to create something new. You actually want to look at the old and you want to look at the funnel of all the pressure moments is the funnel and build out your business that way. If you can get this, I promise you, you will be a better student for anyone you mentor with. Your coach will be able to get you to levels that you could only dream of and you will stop having um, anxiety around what to sell. So if this made a difference for you, please share this. Share this with someone who needs to hear this. Share this on your page. Tag somebody. Comment below. And here's one question that I'd like to leave you with and ask you. What is something that you absolutely, without a doubt, want me to cover on one of these shows? What is, what is if you were to ask me one question that you just want to cover, you want me to cover so badly on one of these shows, ask that below in the comment section. And then I'm going to, I'm going to copy that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at building out that in some of our content coming up in the future to help serve you. So here's to us standing together as a movement, other entrepreneurs, other corporate people, people who want to build, build a movement with their life. Here's to us standing together and getting that word out. So please share this show today. All right, you guys, I will see you tomorrow. Actually, I won't see you tomorrow morning. Um, I actually have somebody else coming on. Oh no, that's not true. I'm lying. Sorry. I will see you tomorrow morning before I go lead. Uh, I'm leading a local event called coach yourself to success here in San Diego, um, Friday and Saturday. So, um, I will be on coffee with Shanda, but, um, but I would still love to hear your comments below on what it is that you want me to actually cover. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye.